1929, a former Zeppelin designer, Claude Dornier, believed the future lay with flying boats and designed this, the DOX. The DOX made several stately trips across the Atlantic. Hey guys, welcome to another heavy metal diecast video. And today we have this behemoth from Shuko. Uh, but unfortunately, you've got to see my face for a little bit. I do apologize for that. Uh, get the women and children out of the house and while I'm on the screen so you don't scare the shit out of them. But uh, today we have got the Dornier DOX from Shuko in 170 second scale diecast. And this thing is a monster. It is absolutely huge, as you can see. And uh, I reckon this is gonna be one of the biggest uh, die-cast models I've ever got. And uh, I think probably available in the whole um, scene at the moment, I suppose. All right, let's get this big, boring brown box open. We'll get Blady out. Get this. This is what, if you choose to buy one of these, this is how it's going to come to you. This is exactly how it has arrived to me. And it's, uh, holy Jesus. <laughs> this thing is uh, absolutely huge. Uh, as you can see there, uh, this thing is massive. Jesus, it's freaking heavy as well. Uh, instead of making an awkward video, uh, I will be right back in a second. I'll quickly get this Dornier DOX out of this boring brown box and we can check out the exciting white box because it's got a picture back right in a second. So here we have it out of its boring brown box um, and this exciting white box because it does have that awesome little picture of the Dornio DOX. The Dornio DOX was the largest and heaviest um, most powerful bloody seaplane ever built at the time and uh, which was made in 1929 obviously by what it says down the bottom of the box uh, of June of 1929, it was finished, but it started construction at the end of 1925, and it took 240,000 work hours to complete it, which is a, a lot of time to build one of these. It made its first flight a month later. Um, although the aircraft was pretty popular with the people and everything like that, there wasn't a, enough interest for, from the commercial entities and stuff like that to, to really warrant the um, manufacture of a lot of these aircraft. So only actually three were made. Um, I think it was... One for Germany and two for Italy, actually. So, and uh, but they were pressed into service, and uh, and they flew for uh, nearly a decade, I think it was, until about 1937. I think they they were retired. But in 1933, uh, Germany's aircraft actually had a bit of a flying accident, and the tail section broke off. And so it was, the next couple of years, it was sitting around waiting for repair, but it never actually got repaired. So in 1936, it was actually put in the uh, brand new uh, aviation museum in Germany. And, uh, and that's where it was the centerpiece there, and that's where it stayed until, unfortunately, uh, 1943, during a uh, RAF night raid on the city, it was destroyed in, in that raid, unfortunately. Uh, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll have a little look at this box, which is very, very large, as you can see, and uh, does have some uh, details, details on the back here as well, but uh, we will get, get this open, and get this, get this out. Let's see if we can uh, make this as awkward looking as possible. Of course, it's uh, stuck in there with super vacuum. And there we have it. We'll turn off the, the big box to the side, get trusty blady. find out and we will get this open mm. and there we have it Jesus this sausage finger test uh, this is absolutely massive so it does come with a, a, a uh, obviously a, a large stand It does look to be a piece oh no, of the model God! sitting in there. Oh, and then no, here. God, please, no, no! We well, may have to do some surgery no! to it. It did not like to travel to uh, Australia, I don't think. 
but let's see if we can actually get this aircraft out and have a little look at it and see what's broken and see what's not. Hopefully not too much damage. We are looking at this for the first time together. And this is, it is very heavy. Um, it is quite large. But there is some sections here that are broken in the tail. Go! Uh, so to do this model a bit of justice, what I'll do is I'll, I'll come back, I'll see what's broken and what's not, and uh, do some little repairs on it, get some little super glue out, and uh, tidy this up a little bit and bring you something, you know, super awesome to look at. I mean, this, this absolutely looks fantastic. All right. All right, guys, we'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. So we've given the super glue 24 hours uh, to dry. Uh, you don't need that, obviously, but I, I wanted to come back the next day and at least guarantee that's perfectly dry. Unfortunately, that means my face is going to be on the screen for a little bit longer than I expected or wanted. And um, I just wanted to quickly show you, as it sits on the cradle, and a bit of a size comparison and to how, how big it is. It's, it's the only way I can show you really how big this thing is, is to have a human standing next to it, sort of be human. And um, you can see our little friend here, the Mr. Schmidt BF109E, compared to our Dornier DOX. And this seaplane is massive, and this is going to be uh, super awesome to really check out properly. So uh, what we'll do is we'll get rid of this, and we will have a real good look at this. We'll be right back in a minute. Okay, we are back to normal way of doing things. Uh, so it does come with this little uh, instruction manual, which is obviously sealed. So we'll get the lady out and uh, cut that open and have a little look and see what's in, in there. And we'll have a little look at this. So, <laughs> okay, you don't really need to cut that open at all. You just might as well just leave it in that packet. So uh, there's there's a tip for you because there is absolutely nothing in there. So well, we'll turf that. And what I'll show you now is the uh, the cradle that comes with it. And this actual cradle that you rest the aircraft on is actually one of the engines that sits on top of the uh, the aircraft. One of the 12 engines, they are uh, six twin engine sort of sections that uh, sit on top of the aircraft and this is one of those and your plane, which I will show you, will sit on that nicely and we will get to the good bit. <laughs> this. Have a look at that. My God. And as I said, this is not light. This is, I think it's around six or seven kilos. So um, it is quite heavy. I'll try not to drop it. <laughs> it is pretty hard to, uh, to sort of hold and show you uh, on the camera. So forgive me if I do go out of focus or something like that does happen. Um, I am trying to uh, hold and keep this all in a nice light and nice focus for you because this uh, is fantastic. Like uh, I, I, this cost me three hundred bucks. Um, so, but oh, hit the camera. Uh, that was including the shipping as well. It was like about eighty dollars of that was the uh, shipping to me because I did buy this from a seller on eBay, uh, as I've said, uh, uh, from Germany. So it did. Uh, did fly over from Deutschland and uh, to me in Australia. I will just plonk this on the ground for a second. You can just put it on the ground without having to put it on its cradle. It does sort of sit there. And as you can see, this is absolutely huge. So uh, with the, the cradle and everything like that, we'll just uh, we'll put it on its cradle. And bang. That is it on its cradle. And, and as you can see, it is absolutely huge. Um, it's got some great detail. And I mean, these things were, they had a crew of about 10 or 14, and it could carry 66 people. It's virtually a transatlantic ocean liner with wings. Like there were sleeping compartments and everything in there. Like the areas could be turned into sleeping compartments. There was a smoking area. It had a wet bar. There was toilets. There was there was it was 
it was like, as I said, a, a ship in the air. And uh, this thing was absolutely huge, powered by those 12 engines as well. And um, it was, one of, as I said, one of the um, largest aircraft, like seaplanes to ever sort of take to the air. And uh, this particular one, like the, the hull was all aluminium and everything like that. But the actual wings were, um, were wrapped in a sort of a fabric. And then they painted it with aluminium paint. <laughs> so it's, uh, that's why the whole aircraft sort of does look all aluminium. But the actual wings are fabric and everything like that. But I think this model itself, wow, that's all I can say is this is amazeballs. It is fantastic. Um, the quality, oh, look, it's got a few little um, fitment sort of issues where, with the, because it's got, that's sort of a little bit slight bent to it because it's squeezed into its position. Um, it's not, uh, look, a Corgi uh, Hobby Master type build. Um, it's not, you know, super, super detail. But for what it is and the aircraft it depicts, for me, this is awesome. I love it. I, I do. I do really like it. It's gonna. It's gonna look fantastic if I can find a shelf to put it on. Uh, it's gonna look super awesome in your collection, and I, I think this. This is a fantastic looking beast as well. So, um, anyway, look. I'll wind the video up. I'm uh, sorry for tormenting you with my face. So if you are, uh, oh, I thought I'd do the video as soon as I got it, just so you can check it out for yourselves. And if you want to pull the trigger yourself, at least you've had a sort of a good look. Hopefully, I've showed you enough of it to to make you sort of you know, decide whether you want to buy it or not. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, at least, uh, you know, throw us a bit of a, a like here and there, and that'd be fantastic. And if you have yet to subscribe to the channel as well, hey, feel free to do that. I will try and put this on the turntable. I'll take some happy snaps of this this massive plane and, and chuck them up at the conclusion of the video, which is winding up now. As you can see, sausage finger test, and you've seen, you know, whole body test compared to this. This this thing is huge. So you will, you, size wise, you will not be disappointed with what you hold in your hands. I'll tell you what. And there's nothing better than holding something nice and big like this in your hands, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, I will wind this video up. I do thank you so much for spending your time, as per usual, watching one of my videos. Hopefully, you didn't get scared away too much by seeing my ugly mug on the screen for for those couple of minutes. So I do apologise for that. And uh, I will try to avoid any of that happening in the future but i do value your viewing time and uh comments and everything uh, you know on the channel i do thank you very much for your support of the channel as well all right guys you all have a fantastic rest of your day i hope you did enjoy the video cheers guys